there is a huge gap right now between our white friends and the black community. There's a huge uh, gaping void in understanding in empathy and in sympathy, and it is primarily uh, because of a lack of education. And so being first-generation American, I don't have the same pain and anguish as so many of my Black brothers and sisters due to years upon years of oppression and slavery. I grew up in white culture going to a private high school, but I played in the NFL. And so I grew up, I, I grew up in my adult years black culture. So I fully understand white culture and black culture. So I said, let me stand as a bridge and bring these two communities together so that they can fully understand what the other is going through, really, so that white people can fully understand what black people are going through and help support the cause. Which I think is phenomenal. I mean, you're, you're, you've had huge success. Tens of millions of people have viewed it. But Emmanuel, this is 2020, not 1920. And so I yeah. understand, you know, some of the education is not there because it didn't exist in public school, but we learn each other through music. I mean, we're talking to Padma Lashmi about her show, uh, learning about each other's culture through food, through these daily interactions, I, you know, MTV, whatever it is at the time that I was watching exposed me to a whole different world. So it's not as if we've been in a vacuum. I mean, I'm lucky to have a TV show and been in TV for many, many years. It's not formal education, but life education is out there, right? Or has it not So been? I think that's the problem. What you said is that we do learn each other through movies. We do learn each other through music. We do learn each other through TV shows. But remember, who are writing and directing the movies that we learn each other through? Who is casting the movies that we learn each other through? The, the, the Black actor and actresses that are being portrayed in these movies and these TV shows, for the most part, they're not like you and I. They are portrayed in a much worse light. They are portrayed as the dregs of society as far as Black people. They're not portrayed as um, the, the, the person who, who went to Texas or the person who may have went to Temple. They're not portrayed in that light. And so I don't want my white brothers and sisters to learn about Black people from what they read in a book or what they read in a movie that is written by a white person. I want them to learn from firsthand experience because that is the true testament to Black character and Black culture. When we go back again to our intimate circles of friends and this exercise and how we can better and more effectively communicate with one another. People do it, for example, when they realize they were bullying someone and they've connected with that person years later and said, I bullied you in high school and I'm sorry for that. Do you try to go back and, and correct the past or do you just look toward the future? When in the wrong, you do apologize. I appreciate all those messages from my friends who are like, hey, Acho, I I'm sorry I said that you weren't black because you sounded educated. I appreciate the apology, but more importantly, let's move forward together in a rational manner. Because what you were sorry for 10 years ago, that's not going to affect my tomorrow. And I think as a culture, as a community, we have to communicate and affect the tomorrows. Like you said, in regards to Roger Goodell and the NFL, being sorry for getting it wrong, that's not going to fix 2020 and beyond. Because you've had, what, 30 million views of your content, what does that tell you? I mean, I, I'm not uh, a big, like, numbers counter of how many people follow, but that's a staggering <laughs> number. Yeah. What do you think that that tells us about society, that so many people have viewed your messages? That's a phenomenal question. It, it tells us that, and it tells me, that there is hope for the future. I got a sweet message from a 73-year-old white woman named Lynn. She grew up in uh, rural Alabama. She shot me an email, and she said, Emmanuel, I didn't go to school with any Negroes growing up. I became a flight attendant and got a little bit more exposure. But after watching your first video, I realized I still need to change. Please don't give up on me yet. I love you, my son and my brother. And if she was one of the 32 million people who have now watched, I realize that ears are open, Tamron. Hearts are ready to be changed. And our world still has hope um, because of people are finally willing to let their hearts be changed and move forward.